Quick note about today's episode, the audio for whatever reason has a clicking in it. I'm trying to figure out why that's happening and remove that from whatever's causing it in the studio. I apologize if it's annoying and it is annoying. If you can power through it, that's great. Otherwise, I understand if you skip this one. Thanks. And welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle and Murdy, and today's topic is a rocky start. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported the company so far. If you've got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y, creative.co. Or you can check us out on all of our social medias. The links are at the top of the website. Be sure to check out our Discord. The link is in the top of the description of this podcast or at the very top of the website as well. We would love to talk with you more there. We've got all sorts of cool stuff that's happening there. We'd like you to be involved, and we'd like to get involved with you. So be sure to check that out. Also, yet another correction. It's chat GPT. Chat GPT. I don't know how I got that wrong in the correction, but I did. So thanks, Marcus. Again, you are absolutely right. I don't know how I got it wrong in the correction. That's a bad sign. Anyway, it is chat GPT. Now, I talked last week about ad nonsense. I talked last week about the future of AI and future of AI generated marketing materials and marketing campaigns and all of the things about that. And I talked about what we were trying to do in the meantime. And while there's a lot of great opportunity, I would say, for the AI world to really make this, uh, this process easier, we're not there yet. So instead, we have been working diligently on making new advertisements. Last week, we made, I made 14 new videos. And I originally had a much bigger picture for a more cinematic, um, a more dynamic, more sets, costumes, location shooting type, you know, goals. But the reality of the of the work environment, the reality of our time constraints made it so that that would need. I needed to temper my expectations a little bit with what we could actually accomplish in the time that we had available. So what you may have noticed if you've been watching our Instagram is I've been putting out these videos that we've put together and there are at the moment, I believe 15 or 16 of them that we've made and I'm going to continue to release them over time. Um, They're all running as advertisements at the moment, but most of them, several of them, a good portion of them are the same background and very similar in style and feel. Now that was done for efficiency stake. That was, it was, it, it became obvious to me after the first day of creatively banging my head against the wall trying to figure out how to film these videos in these beautiful artistic styles. It dawned on me that in light of our time constraints and the issues that we are having with our advertising, the answer is we just need to get something done and then we can add more later. And that strategy of get something done now and add more later, I think, is long-term a good one. However, it did mean that for this first batch, a lot of the videos look very similar. They have kind of a similar look and feel and they're filmed in the same location, which is my desk at home. Now, my wife appears in a couple of them, so that's fun, but... It's been a good refining of the style. It normally involves us using this amazing camera that we purchased to do six or seven slow motion shots combined with six or, uh, and that's usually with someone in them, me or otherwise. And then we'll have another five or six shots that I'll record separately that will be panning overhead you know, the things open, right? They'll be more like what would be a normal static shot, but they'll be moving a little bit. I'll take those 12 to 14, maybe maybe 11 to 14 images, videos, short clips, normally a couple of seconds a piece, and I will stitch them together. I'll cut out the best pieces of them. I will have the story unfold as best I can. I'll make sure to pick the ones that have the similar lighting and feel to them because sometimes the lighting shifts a little bit so that the lighting isn't a jarring change or things like that. And I'll put those together in short clips. Now, I realized as I've been editing these that my original videos had clips that were probably two to three seconds a piece. So it'd be one, 1,000, two, 1,000, switch. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, switch. It was too slow, though. That pace, while it allowed for more grand shots, I would say, it, it felt like you were crawling through the video the whole time. So I, I shortened them. So now they're all between about 1 and 1.3 seconds to 1.9 seconds normally. That's kind of the, the longest of them. And I've been evolving the style as well because we start off with one kind of generic shot of the product just so you get a sense of what we're talking about. Then there's all sorts of cool movement shots interspersed with the kind of the what would be like I just like I described more but static shots that are however 
are moving. They just don't have someone in them. And then it ends with more of a same static kind of overhead shot of the product. And I've added a kind of a stylized version of the text in a typewriter font. And as I've evolved this process, one of the things that I realized is that I have to develop the content. It has to be filmed in 9 by 16 aspect ratio, so a vertical smartphone dimension. But it also needs to work in 5.4 because Instagram and a lot of the Facebook advertising in general requires it to work in 5.4 or it crops it to 5.4. So it's been a good little exercise in saying, how can I film in 9 by 16 or 16 by 9? I can't remember which one's which, um, but film in that that uh, vertical format, but make sure that what I want filmed is right in the middle of the action, of the middle of the frame, so that when I crop it, we don't lose anything. And then it's an exercise of adding the text to it. And it's tricky to tell a story in 15 seconds. It is. It's tricky to tell, to give a sense of the product in 15 seconds. You really only have the opening, in my opinion, the opening text of what it is, and you have the closing text of get yours today at murdycreative.co, right? You got those two things are already preset, and you have maybe three other text box options, other three other moments of adding text. Much more than that, and people don't see the images, they just stare at the text because that's all that's there. Much less than that, you don't really, it's, it's kind of boring. The, the videos by themselves, is, even though they're as interesting as they are, you feel like there should be more, right? There's a sense of like, oh, what's, what's going on? So I, I think that that's really the sweet spot. And so I've recorded a lot of videos in that same format. And I put them out and we launched them and we put them into an advertisement. We did a brand new campaign, perfectly clean with no history. Specifically because I didn't want the algorithm to use its previous history to optimize for advertisements that we aren't running anymore. And what I mean by that is this. We've had a campaign that's been running now for six months and we'll cycle creative in and out of it over time. And we've got some pieces of creative in that advertisement campaign that get 80% of the budget allotted to them. Well, 80% 80% of the budget being allotted to them is a bit of a, f- a fulfilling prof- self-fulfilling prophecy, in my opinion, right? If you're Facebook spending most of the advertising dollars on this one ad, and it's leading to this one product, and then this, their sales of that one product, it's going to reinforce that that's a good ad. Is it a good ad? I don't know. Maybe, probably. But as that carries on, the algorithm gets less and less interested in trying alternative advertisements. So when you add new content in it, I don't think that it, it properly analyzes them. Now, I could be wrong, right? There's a, that's a very real possibility. At some level, the geniuses at Facebook that develop these AI strategies are probably quite good at this, and they've probably been doing it for a long time. So who am I to criticize them? However, in an effort to let this marketing strategy, this new marketing technique, rise and fall on its own merit, build its own intelligence within it, I want, didn't want it to come in with any of the history of advertisements that weren't running anymore. So I started a new broad campaign that's very broad, and I put all, at the time, 14 ads in it, now 16, 14 ads, 16, into one advertisement strategy, one to our advertisement campaign, and I said, just go. It's a daily budget for the entire campaign. It can allot the dollars however it sees fit, and it's been running for a few days now. Not well, though. And I'm trying to figure out why it's not running well. There is one video that's doing particularly well out of the set and it's still not doing very well but it's the one of me and the walking in the woods so it's it's the one of the 14 that's not like the others that's not entirely true there's a couple of odds and ends but it's one it's not one of the ones that's the filmed in the way i just described nor filmed in the way that most of them are filmed it's the one that's on set on location in costume and that worries me a little bit Because it worries me that the advertisements that I spent a lot of time putting together that are all of the generic ones that I put together, they're not going to speak to people and it's not going to work. And only the ones that are filmed on location on set, like we'd originally had the idea for, are the only ones that are going to work. Which is a problem because we don't have the time nor the budget nor the, um, well know-how, I should say, to properly do all of these videos on site and on location, and we need them to work now, preferably. So this is an element of all of this that's being a challenge for me, because if you go back into the history of the Murdy Creative Company, when we first started advertising, right, one thing that I realized that was a strategy I'd used initially that somebody actually called me out on on social media was I would show pictures, the advertisement was, it's sitting on a desk being made. Now, that was a good 
I think, initial strategy. But what ended up happening was someone pointed this out, and I think they were right because we changed our strategy and it worked better when we changed, was people don't want to see the product being made. They want to see the product in use. They want to see the product how they would use it rather than you making it. Now, I think there's a place for both, but I think that overall they were correct. I think that actually that was things. So we changed a lot of the advertising to focus on the product in use, and it was almost all static images. It was static images either put together in a slideshow that automatically scrolled or just static images. But neither of none of those things, either even either the video, which was just the slideshow, or the static images, they weren't like the videos that you see now. They weren't moving storytelling videos that were a kind of a cohesive story. They weren't like that. So this is the first effort that we've made to tell a cohesive story in these in the product in action, right? With that with that product in action. And I'm not impressed with the early results. Now, I don't know what macroeconomic headwinds that we've talked about previously in the podcast are affecting this. I don't know if it's the tax season thing. I don't know if it's the overall market concerns. I don't know if it's that the political season is starting to ramp up, so ads are getting more expensive, and that's why we're seeing a decreased effectiveness out of our ads. I don't know if it's the fact that people just don't like Facebook or Instagram anymore. There's so many different reasons why this could not be working, but it's not working very well. Now, it's only been, at this point, barely, this is day four that I'm recording this podcast um, of the ads running. So that's not nearly long enough for it to optimize. But it's not optimized well yet. And it needs to optimize well soon because we need the financial situation of the company to stabilize. We need to get back to the numbers that we need to get to. Now, one element of this that is going to come up, and I know that this is exactly what's going to happen if I answer the phone call from the Facebook marketing people because Facebook pays... Well, they don't pay. I pay for them. But Facebook will give you a free call with a Facebook marketing expert when you spend as much money as we do. And I've gotten several calls that I've been dodging for the most part from them for a while now. And part of the reason I dodge them is because the strategies that they provide are very canned responses. They are extraordinarily basic and obvious. And frankly, their recommendation is always the same, which is go is like is don't put any restrictions on the Facebook algorithm. Don't narrow the the demographics, don't narrow the geology or the geography, not geology, the geography of the location, don't don't narrow anything and make sure that your ad is being placed everywhere that Facebook places ads. Now, to me that sounds a little bit like a disingenuous piece of advice, right? Because that sounds like a piece of advice that benefits Facebook only. For example, one of the places that we don't advertise, I've turned it off is what's called Facebook in-stream ads. If you've been watching a video on Facebook and an advertisement pops up right in the middle of the video, like at a good part of the video, and it could be a 10-second video and six seconds in a pot of an advertisement pops up, that's called Facebook in-stream. They launched it like last year, and it is, I hate it. I think it's the dumbest thing in the world. It's so annoying, and I personally, as a Facebook user, despise it. And so, I don't use them in our advertisements. But Facebook advertisement marketplace advisors will say you should do that, right? So I've avoided their advice for the most part. But I've been tempted to bring them on the phone and talk to them about this because I don't know where the trends are going from a Facebook advertising perspective. I had anticipated and I had assumed that it was the more reels-based, sort of polished TikTok style videos where it's more like a traditional commercial less like a a bunch of random photos stitched together because that's where it felt like the direction was going but four days in we're not seeing very big success and frankly as much as this is silly I would have expected we would now what they're going to say is this they're going to say believe it or not spend more money on Facebook and they're not entirely wrong with their perspective on that. Now, they're wrong in function because that's, it's not smart to put good money after bad, right? That's not a good, I don't want to take an advertisement that's not doing well and spend more money on it. That doesn't make any sense. But it sort of does, and I'll tell you why. So, Facebook algorithm has something called the learning phase. Now, it's exactly what it sounds like. New advertisements or significant changes to a campaign put the, the algorithm back into what they call their learning phase, where it tries to, 
it tries a bunch of different things, right? It tries to make the campaign as a whole the most successful by experimenting. And they freely admit that during the learning campaign, your cost per advertising will be higher. They freely admit that it will not be as efficient as it can be because the algorithm is trying new things. And so the problem is that it needs to have 50 successes within a certain time frame. I think it's a week. It needs to have 50 successful objective completions for it to consider itself learned, for it to stop being in the learning phase and, and double down on the things that are working. Now, in our case, because we're using conversion-based advertising, that, what that means is that it's a success is a sale, right? It doesn't count anything but a sale as a success. Well, we haven't had nearly enough. We haven't had nearly enough sales in the time frame for it to get out of the learning phase. And so it just continues to stay in the learning phase until it hits that 50, right? So it'll stay in the learning phase and stay in the learning phase and stay in the learning phase until it hits that 50 in the time frame, and then it will optimize on that. So Facebook's su- suggestion would be, I'm guessing, I don't know this for a fact, but it's been the suggestion in the past and it tracks, is spend more money because what will end up happening is, is it can get out of the learning phase faster. Now, that is not entirely incorrect logically, right? That makes sense. But it also has a bad problem where it means that you've got to put up more liquidity right now. And this is, by the way, where the marketing strategy is always a challenge, right? Because when, when good times are going good, this is why the world of small business is... I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It's when the things are going really well, right? When sales are going really well, and pr- then you, you can't keep up with production, but you can't hire more people in time because it probably won't stick around for very long. And so you spend your whole time working in production, trying to keep the things going. And then what ends up happening is the advertising and all of its success starts to become a little stale and it burns out. It becomes less successful. And then the sales go back down. And then you try a whole bunch of things, but during that time, you don't have any money coming in or you have not nearly enough money coming in. So you're burning through your runway that you've saved up from when the times were good if you were smart. And if you weren't smart and you spent it all, you're in big trouble. But as the advertising becomes less effective, your sales go down. Now production isn't the problem, but marketing and sales are the problem. And so then you spend a bunch of time trying to get your advertisements to work, but you need money to do so, right? You need more money to get the advertisements back to working. And you spend a lot of money if you have the money and you suddenly are able to get it back to going again. But this is like that biblical principle, right? To ha- those who have much more will be given and to those who have nothing, you know, more, all will be taken. I am, by the way, grossly misquoting that, and there's much more context to that, so it's not as bad as it sounds. But the concept is, to some extent, very true in the business world, which is when you have momentum as a company, when things are going well, you need to do whatever you possibly can to preserve that momentum. Because things, when things are going well, you have money. When you have money, when you have that cash flow, that positive cash flow, then you can try new things that will do better, right? You can be riskier with your investments, which If you have 10 risky investments and you've got money to do all 10, the likelihood of one or two of them becoming more successful is high. However, if things are going poorly and you don't have very much money, you don't get to invest in all 10. You get invest in two. And the odds that those two will be the one, the the one or two that would have been successful out of the 10 is not great. And so now you've put a whole bunch of money after something that, if it goes bad, puts you in an even worse position, right? So you can see how this is like, it goes, if your things are going well, it gets better. And if things are going worse, it gets worse. And then you may say to yourself, how do you break that cycle? I don't know, prayer? It's always a good start for me. Um, but what breaks the cycle normally is something happens. A big sale. A change in your marketing strategy that happens to work, right? And the only answer to get out of it is to keep trying new things and do everything you can to survive in the meantime, right? You got to keep going to keep the company going and keep trying new things, right? And as, as was, I, I don't, I think it was Andrew Clavin who may, I don't think he coined this phrase, but he might've, um, despair isn't only a sin, it's bad strategy. And this is exactly what I would recommend to any small business owner who's out there who is struggling right now. Despair is not only a sin, it's bad strategy. So when things are tough and things are tough, right? It's a tough time for everyone, right? This is not a good time to be, right? Now, that's actually not true. It's a great time to be. We have the best, medica- we have best, the best medicine. We are at a 
peaceful, prosperous time for this country, despite the moments, like despite the last couple of years where it seems like things have gotten really wrong. As a whole, things are going pretty well still. And I'm, I'm going to defend that to the, to, to, to when it's not true anymore. But we have to be grateful for what we have. And we have to realize that this moment in time, this, despite the fact that it seems like a trough, despite the fact that it's challenging for us, both as individuals and for us as a company, it will change. The one thing you can always count on is that things change. And the hope that we have is that they'll change for the better. And I think as a whole, they do oftentimes. So despite the fact that we got off to a rocky start with this advertising strategy, and despite the fact that even though I think this is a good advertising strategy, I could be wrong and I could spend a lot of extra money trying to optimize the Facebook and get it out of learning phase just to discover that it was, I was wrong in my gamble that this new marketing strategy is the one that will work. But that's how it goes, right? That's the way the game is played. You're not guaranteed anything in this life but adventure and death, right? Those are the only two things that will happen to you for sure. So I think you should become comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? You have to be willing to say, you know what? This is going to be hard and it's not going to be fun. And life has a lot of suffering, but suffering can be a good thing, right? You can find the redemptive part of suffering. And actually, that's one of the things that I think is a beautiful part of the fundamental aspect of Christianity is that Christianity says that the suffering is redemptive, right? The, the sacrifice, the things going bad can be a redemptive time for you as an individual, and because life is a lot of suffering, that's good, right? That's good that you have that redemptive attitude. If you just look at suffering as a bad thing, if you look at struggle, as hardship as a bad thing, and nothing but a bad thing, you're going to live a pretty sad life. It's going to be pretty hard. And my dad pointed this out. He goes, you know, Colin, I may be misquoting this, Dad, so if you're listening and you think I, think I misquoted that, feel free to let me know and I'll update this. But I think what he said, if I remembered correctly, and this is what I took away, despite what you said, is that when things are going well, I have a tendency to drift. I, I don't have as good, I don't keep my, my strong posture from like decision making and fiscal responsibility and playing the smart game. When things are going well, I have a tendency to drift away from that. When, when, but when I have my back against the wall, that's when I really perform well. And I actually think that that's probably true, that my performance is tied to how directly how difficult the company is, is having, which arguably that's a pretty good thing, right? And we're not in a great shape right now because sales have slowed pretty significantly. And if any of you have ideas as to what might boost that, right? If any of you have ideas about what you think would drive sales up for us, if any of you have ideas that you think might be uh, an advertising campaign or a marketing as effort that you saw that you're like, that's great. Or more importantly, if there's an advertising you campaign that you had or you saw that was a product you previously didn't want to buy or didn't think you should buy. And all of a sudden that marketing effort changed your mind and you actually bought it. Please tell me about that. Because any marketing effort right now that gets people from a position of I don't really need this or I don't really want this to I'm going to pay for it especially now, that's a marketing strategy to copy because that's one that works. So then if you have marketing strategies that you know work because it worked on you, please comment below on the video. Send us an email. I, smoke signals. I don't know what you end up wanting to do, but get me the information because I desperately need to know. Discord's a great way to share that. Feel free to reach out to us in the Discord. I love talking to people there. So I, I want to know because we definitely need that. We need to have that successful strategy that we can implement. So I appreciate all of those who, who have reached out. And, and well, things will go better, right? There's always change, right? So things can only go wherever they're going to go. And the only way is through, right? It's like Winston Churchill said, when you're going through hell, keep going. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to check back in next Thursday for the next topic. And don't forget to check that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to get updated when we release new episodes. If you have any questions or concerns about your binder, journal, folio, accessory, anything else we sell, please feel free to reach out to us on the main page for our website at murdycreative.co. There's a little contact form there. If for whatever reason that's not a good way to reach us or you want to reach out to us in a different way, we do have our email. You can email us directly, S-A-L-E-S at murdycreative.co, sales at murdycreative.co. You can give us a phone call Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. That's 414 414- 434-9001. That's the phone number. You can also text us at that number as well. 414-434-9001. If you don't get a hold of us, it's probably because Anna, who's doing our phones now, is, is helping in production. Um, so please leave us a voicemail. We will call you back. We do appreciate that. Or you can give us a, reach out to us one of our other methods. Um, if you think we deserve it, a really good route way to help the community, community and the company is to leave us a good review. So you can check out our reviews at murdycreative.co slash reviews, or you can leave us a good review at murdycreative.co slash review. 
like you're going to leave a review. Also, murdycreative.co slash leave a review will do the same thing. It's going to take you right now to our Google page where you can leave us a review on Google. We are constantly working on optimizing that Google SEO, and that's where the reviews help us best right now. We also have our Facebook reviews. Uh, if you want to leave a review there instead, that's where we, we had our reviews for a long time, so you can go read even more there. We have, I think, 150 plus reviews there, so it's a great way to get a little feedback on what people think of the company and people think of the product, and that's a great place to leave your feedback. Word of mouth is the best form of advertising, so tell your friends, tell your family, tell your enemies. Uh, you can get a little something for doing so at the bottom left-hand corner of the website. There's the rewards program. Check that box out to, to get all sorts of details. Learn more about that. We'd love to talk to you more about that if you have questions, but it's a great way to get stuff. You can even get free stuff there if you're doing a good job at it. So if you're looking for multiple items for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason, we do have bulk discounts available. They are built directly into the cart. So all you need to do is add everything to your cart. You can mix and match to your heart's desire. It's purely based off the total cart quantity. So it doesn't matter necessarily what you get. But once you add that all to your cart and you hit checkout, the appropriate discount will be applied for the items that you're purchasing. It is bulk discount started five. So you don't even have to add that many, but you can definitely get some stuff for that. Also, we have custom engraved items. Now, that custom engraving doesn't have a minimum order quantity, so you can get just one of something custom engraved with your logo, with your design, with your favorite phrase, all of those things you can do. Um, and with that, you, there's no minimum order quantity. It's a simple flat fee, no setup fees. It's just usually $15 per item, so there's no you know, basic things like that. And once you get that done, you can go to any of the product pages on our website, hit the blue button that says Add Logo Engraving. It'll take you to the custom version of that product, and you can launch the customizer from there. From there, you can add images, text, you can resize, rotate, reposition, all that good stuff, and you can add to cart. If you're going to get something for your company and you want to get a bunch of them, you can customize it first and then add to cart and then change the quantity there and hit checkout, and it'll automatically apply the bulk discount to the custom things as well. So it's great in that regard. And the bulk discount also applies to the engraving itself, so it can even be less than that $15. When you do that as well, if for whatever reason you don't see that custom launch, that the blue button that says add custom engraving or anything like that, feel free to send us an email directly, sales at murdycreative.co, sales at murdycreative.co, and we will be happy to create a custom order for you as well as like a listing to, for you to purchase, but then also a mock-up so you can see what it'll look like. So reach out to us directly if you don't see that button, and we'd be happy to help you anyway. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day, and goodbye.